Hi, this is Terence Wu with Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to take a look at a really cool customer example and talk about different methods of sheet metal modeling in SolidWorks. Bulletproof Bumpers in Red Deer, Alberta manufactures heavy-duty aftermarket truck bumpers. They have various options for different makes and models, and for our discussion we'll be using this particular design for a Chevy. We're going to ignore the inside structure and focus on the outside shell of the bumper which is made of several pieces of sheet metal bent and welded together. In order to manufacture the shell, the flat pattern of each piece is needed. Now, I'm sure most of you watching this already know that SolidWorks can calculate sheet metal flat patterns, so all we need to do is create a model of the bumper like this one, and we're home free. Unfortunately, the shape of the bumper involves some tricky angles that can make sheet metal modeling a challenge if you don't use the right approach. We're going to review three different methods that can be used to model a sheet metal part. The flange method, the flat pattern method, and the convert method. Spoiler, the convert method is the best fit for this situation. But let's go through each of these methods one by one. First, the flange method. This is the most common method used to create sheet metal parts and is usually the easiest approach for most shapes. We start by creating a simple sketch and use the base flange tool to extrude it. As always, we can define the sheet metal properties like thickness, bend radius, and bend allowance, but I'm not really going to get into the details of those settings in this video. Once we have our base flange, we can then add tabs, cuts, edge flanges, and other features to complete the geometry. Next up is the flat pattern method. Usually we have a 3D shape we want to achieve and we use our sheet metal model to help us figure out the flat pattern needed. When using the flat pattern method, we start with the flat pattern and then bend it into the 3D shape. So we're basically working backwards. Since doing all the hard work yourself is no fun, this approach isn't usually recommended. However, it does come in handy when you have legacy data you want to work with. We can import a flat pattern DXF, then use the base flange tool to add a thickness, and then use the sketched bend tool to bend it into shape. While both the flange method and flat pattern method worked reasonably well for this first piece, we would have a pretty tough time modeling the other pieces with the right angles to fit together properly without doing a bunch of math beforehand. This is where the convert method can help. The convert method uses the faces of an existing body to define the sheet metal shape. Because of all the tricky angles, it's definitely easier to model a solid body like this rather than model the sheet metal pieces directly. Using the Convert to Sheet Metal feature, we select a fixed face and then any bend edges. We can set our sheet metal properties, choose the thickness direction, and choose to keep the original body. Keeping the body allows us to create the next piece with the Convert tool again, and we can simply repeat the process with different selections. For the final convert feature, we can turn off the keep body option. You can definitely see why the convert method is a good strategy for modeling sheet metal that needs to fit together. I hope you found our review of these three sheet metal modeling methods useful. At this point, we've determined that the convert method is the best approach for our bumper, and I'm going to wrap up this video. But we've still got some work to do to finish up the shell of this bumper, so stay tuned for part two where we'll discuss some tips for making the convert method work smoothly. Thanks for watching.